Oh, seeing you is a great way to start the week. It is Monday, January 29th. I'm John Zadar, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to talk about hot penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market, major exchange or the OTC. Now, what qualifies a stock to be a hot penny stock besides the price? Well, that's simple. Two things, a hot chart and hot news. You find both of those, likelihood of your stock running pretty good. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got a few for us right now. This first one, nobody's a stranger to, I'm sure. This is Yuling's Ice Cream, ticker YCRM. Now, you probably remember her from September of last year when she was running, running hard on news that she was merging with Pickle Jar. From September to October, she ran about 1,000%. Then they came out with the news press saying they were terminating the deal. She fell that thousand percent right back down to the floor. About a month and a half later, they came out with another news press saying that they were merging with another company called Reach Out, which was a cybersecurity company. Well, people kind of took this with a grain of salt, right? They've already been bamboozled once. Sounds like it could just be talk. Well, there's been a lot of filings. Eulingers is liquidating all of their assets. The management has all changed. Share exchange has occurred. This merger is going through. Time to look at the company right now. So Eulings finished today at 0085, and she was up about 15.5% today, and it looks like she's got aftermarket activity, even being on the OTC. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks we're always talking about. This is validated information. Validated information is hard to get with pinks. So when you see these, you're ahead of the game. They say that they've got no money coming in. Shell Risk says they're in business, but they're not making any money. Well, I'm sure this is going to change one way or the other because everything is changing right now. And they said they had independent directors. That is for uplisting. They say they still want to uplist, but it's going to be different independent directors now because it's a new management that has come in. So what is this new company about? Well, we do get some information here. Reach Out Technology is not your typical managed service provider. It is a transformative force in cybersecurity and IT services dedicated to serving small to medium-sized businesses with unparalleled excellence. And that's really all we need to jump into here, folks. They're going into cybersecurity, and there's a lot of companies out there that help protect the digital information at the business, coming in, going out. They protect it from cyber attacks, from hijacks, from ransoms, all of that sort of stuff. But most of these companies are only pandering to the huge corporations, Fortune 500 enterprises. The small and medium-sized businesses just can't afford the services and they're suffering. So this company is coming on the scene to take care of all of that. It is a huge market. So what was the relative volume around Eulingers today? That's good. We got over twice as much volume going from $5 million to $11 million. Share structure for the company. Interesting right now, and I'm sure this is going to change, folks. I don't know how, but I'm sure this is going to change. Outstanding share count currently is about $350 million. Insiders got nothing. Things are changing, right? So we've got all those shares right now. But again, I think this is a temporary situation. Market cap currently is at $2.5 million. It's a very small market cap considering they are now merging with a company that is making revenues. This could jump very quickly. Taking a look at the financials, well, we don't see any money here, not for 2022, and we had nothing for 2023. And as you can see, looking at their balance sheet, they're winding down. There's not a lot here. Total assets, $171,000. We know that's thousands and not just 171, because they tell us to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. Uh, total liabilities is $1.7 million. Uh, they've got some long-term debt here. As you're going to see in the disclosures, they're selling all of their ice cream equipment, which they bought when they came on the market. And that is going to settle most of their debt. So they are winding down. So this too is basically old news. Diving into those disclosures. We do have some recent ones here. We got two in January, an 8K on the 16th. And today we got an NT10K. 
Now that NT10K is an abbreviation. That is reading we are not filing our 10K, our annual report, on time. So this buys them 15 extra days. But with everything that's going on right now, I'm not too sure how that's going to settle out. This other 8K, this is the company getting rid of their debt, you lingers. They tell us here that the debtor is offered to transfer and assign all of their ice cream related assets to the creditor if the creditor releases them from their debt of $1,100,000. And the creditor agreed. So the company's liquidated all of their assets. And then back here in November, we got two 8Ks, and those are big cards they've laid on the table. One, they've already exchanged shares. It is a deal happening right now, and they've already changed the management. So the deal is going through. There's no doubt about that. So let's take a look at that news. We got two pieces of news here. One you're quite familiar with when the company announced their termination of their merger with Pickle Jar. And then the other one came out on the 16th of November when they told us they were entering a merger deal, an acquisition actually, with Reach Out Technology. Now, when you jump into this news, they don't give us a lot of information about the company. They talk more about the management, particularly Rick Jordan, who is now the president and the CEO. Well, I'm not going to go into all of this, but they've got a lot of faith in this guy. They say he's a go-getter. He thinks outside of the box. So they're expecting big things just because of this guy being in the management team. So that's really what we got here. We have a merger that is happening. It is not talked. They've already exchanged shares. The management is already turned over and the chart is set up for a run. She has come down, but she's come down to a perfect landing. Let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're taking a look at ticker YCRM, Uling's Ice Cream, and I have pulled up a three-year, one-week chart. This will give you a reference point for the supports and resistances. On the smaller time frame charts, all you see are white lines, and they absolutely mean nothing to you. Now, I've been watching this company ever since it came onto the market back in September of 2022, primarily because I used to eat the ice cream when I was a kid. So she came on the market September of 2022, hitting a high of almost three cents back then. From then, she was falling hard. In May of 2023, she hit a low of triple zero five. September news came out about the merger with Pickle Jar. She ran up a thousand percent. Then they came out with the news press. They were terminating that deal. She fell that thousand percent right back to exactly where she started from. Jumped back up onto this 20-day SMA on our three-year chart. Had a nice run on the news on the acquisition of Reach Out. Cooled off a little bit, fell back to the 20, and she's jumped. Looking like she's ready to climb again. Now let's come down to the six-month, four-hour view. There's our low, 0005. She's slowly inching her way towards that 200. We've got some inspiration here. Volume's coming in. The price has bounced. And then she took off. Now, there was about three or four days of running before we looked at it. She had gone like 350%, and we dared look at it. Well, I'm glad we did, because there was another 600% to be taken afterwards. Then she crashed on the news press of the termination of Pickle Jar. She did bounce back up onto the 200 without any catalyst. She rode up there until the news came out about Reach Out. That pushed her up. She cooled off. And right now, she has come back up around her 200. Lots of volume. You can see that's been growing for the last four or five days. Big price bars going through all of the resistances and getting on top of all of her SMAs. She's looking like she's ready to climb again. Our oscillators. We have a potential crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator. Already had a crossover on our MACD and it's pushing up. And our RSI, it's a little cool right now. It's down there at 52. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she has been hanging around this support resistance, depending which side of it she's on, at 0095. We hit a high here of 1.3, 1.4 cents. She came down through all of the resistances and the 200 down to this low of 006. Went sideways for a few days, and today she broke out. Basically, she pushed her price over all the SMAs, and right now she is over top of the 200, but she is below the nine day. I think she's settling, folks. We can see our 200 haul has turned around. Our 20 
has crossed the 200 and the 50 and put itself above the 50. The SMAs need to be in righteous order for it to climb smoothly. You want the smallest at the top, the biggest at the bottom. There's our 9, our 200. These all have to get over the 200. 9, 20, 50, 200. Things are looking good in the department of turning our trend around. Oscillators were very strong, but this big red bar at the end of the day is starting to cool things off. And wow, that brought our RSA all the way down from the overbought to 53. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. So there's our little bubble of 006. She hit her head on the 200, which was still falling. Couple times, came back down, jumped onto the 200, bounced off for 50, and she launched right when our 200 went flat. You can see it was falling, flattens out, and now she has changed her trend today and her 200 is climbing. She ripped this morning going from double zero seven up to double, no, single zero one. Uh, you're looking at almost 50% gains there. She then fell back to her 50, looked like the 50 was going to hold her up, but it didn't. It crashed through the 50 and everything else, and it looks like she's coming down to this support of double zero eight. Now, let's just take a look at our 15 minute. She could be coming down to the 50. All of the SMAs have crossed the 200. It looks nice here. This was a dangerous drop, but it could just be repositioned itself for another big pounce, a crouch before the pounce. Oscillators say she's pretty weak right now, but we know there's a merger coming. They've already exchanged shares. They've already changed the management. Uh, Ulings has already liquidated their assets. So it's coming. <laughs> so you might want to put YCRM on your watch list and watch for the volume to come in. This could be some easy profits. Now here's something we don't get to do too often. Look at a hot penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. I got one for us. This is ticker P-O-L, Polish.com. Now it's pretty straightforward about this company. She's fallen out of compliance with the New York Stock Exchange. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a catalyst, but here's the deal. The New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, the major exchange stocks, they all have this very long list of minimum criteria that they have to keep up with all the time. How many shareholders they have, a minimum bid price, stockholder equity, market cap, all sorts of things. The problem is, is that anytime they try to fix one of these, they either hurt the investor or they hurt the value of the stock. And if they don't fix it, worst case scenario, they end up getting kicked off the major exchange down to the OTC. So why is this a catalyst? Well, the point where they have broken compliance is a safe one. They can fix this without hurting the investors and without hurting the stock. So it is an under the radar catalyst. They're going to get out of hot water tomorrow. So P.O.L., she finished the day at $4.91 and was just under 11.5% gains. So what does Polish.com do? They have an online site here in America where they sell appliances, furniture, and home goods. And they got a list of some of the things that they sell right there. So what was the relative volume for this company today? What? Are you kidding me? Her average over the last 30 days is six and a half million shares. And today she does 105,000 shares and goes up over 11%. Something don't smell right with that. This seems fishy. So I jumped over here to Yahoo Finance and I looked up the stock and I looked up its history. This shows me every day's trading with this company. Every day it's been on the market. It'll show you the open, the close, the high, the low, and the volume. Now, between these two yellow boxes, we've got 30 days. They say we've been doing an average of 6.5 million. Well, what do we got here? 400,000, 200,000, 100, 100, 100. Where's all the millions? All right, we've got 2 million here. We've got 2 million there. 1 million, 19 million, and 2. We got six days of over a million. Lots of days under a half a million. Folks, the average does not come out to six and a half million. It's closer to a half a million. Maybe, maybe a half a mil million shares have been moving every single day. But in either case, she took a big drop today. If it was 500,000 shares on average, we're down to 105 today. And still, she took that 11% gains.
Looking at the share structure for the company, we've got ourselves a low float. And I don't know what it is, but the outstanding share count is 2.1 million and the float is never higher than that. So we've got ourselves an excellent float. Market cap is up there at 9.3 million. Financials for POL. Well, let's see, over the last four years, she's been growing fast. Look at that, folks, going from 47 million to 55 million. 345 million to over a half a billion. And she is taking profit all the way along the way. Looking at her quarterly reports. Um, well, she's making money, but this last quarter was her saddest quarter over the last year, doing 77.8 million. Still bringing home profit though. Take a look at that balance sheet. Money in the bank, they got roughly 15 million. Lots of assets, 238 million. Not too much liability, 184, which gives us positive shareholder equity of $54.5 million. So we're not holding a bag with this company. Checking out those disclosures. We've got one recent disclosure, came out on the 5th of January in 8K, and this is the news. But rather than go into the filing, they actually put this out in a news press on the same day. The company has scheduled its annual meeting of stockholders for January 30th, 2024. <laughs> You're going, John, you said they were out of compliance. Where is that news? That is the news. Jumping into it. They tell us here that the company reiterated that it has scheduled its annual meeting of stockholders for January 30th, 2024, as they listed in the filing on December 26, 2023. On January 5th, 2024, New York Stock Exchange sent the company a letter stating that the company was not in compliance because it had not held an annual meeting of stockholders for the fiscal year ended 2022. Not 2023. This is 2024. They didn't hold a stockholders meeting for 2022. And they're going to try to fix that. How do you fix a missed appointment from years ago? Well, they tell us here, Polish expects to cure the instance of non-compliance, which is not anticipated to impact the trading of the common stock, that's what I said, upon holding the annual meeting this month. They're confident that they can have a meeting tomorrow. How do we know it's tomorrow? Because they don't give us any time here. Well, they said they put out a filing on it. Right there it is. The annual meeting will take place in a virtual meeting format on January 30th, 2024 at 11 a.m. So that's tomorrow, folks. This is the 29th. They are going to get out of the sauna, this hot water, at 11 a.m. Now, I would anticipate we should see a bounce based on this. Now, this is a simple thing. All they got to do is have the meeting. Nothing happens to us. Nothing happens to the stock. They're out of hot water. Woo, we celebrate without any pain. That's what we're hoping. So, let's go take a look at the chart and see what we can look forward to. Let's take a look at ticker POL. This is a six-month, four-hour chart for Polish. It was at the end of July. She hit a high of $33.99 and then abruptly fell down to the $8.50 range. But she wasn't done falling. For about five months, she continued dribbling downhill till she hit this low of $1.05 in December. Now, off of this low bubble, she launched, folks. I'm not kidding. She went from basically a dollar to $10.80. You're looking at over a 1,000% run in one day. She continued on that uptrend and had another jump about six days later, going from five and a half up to $13. You're looking at 125% gains there. Came down, continued her uptrend. Now, that's the strange part. I'm not used to seeing big jumps in an uptrend. These normally happen in breakouts. Then here on January 11th, she finally stopped climbing and she fell all the way back down to her 200. And she settled there for a couple days and now it looks like she's ready to start climbing again. And all of our oscillator is in agreement. Our RSI has come from the basement of about 20 up to 52 which is cool. I'd like to see it at 55, but that's a lot better than 19. 
Our MACD had a crossover two days ago. That is climbing. Our green bars are accumulating, getting bigger and bigger. Our PPO is pushing up, about ready to cross the pink line. And we've got my perfect setup on my oscillators. PPO blue line is going up. My ADX trend continuation is coming down. As long as those two are separating, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. This is looking pretty good right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so we were on top of the 50-day SMA here. Had a nice run through all of our resistances. Got way high up here to $13. Came down, bounced off of this resistance, took another run. And then after that, she just broke away from everything. Went through all of her supports through the 200, down to this low of $3.61, and it looks like off of this low she is bouncing. She's gone through her 200 haul, 20, and 50, and it looks like she is still pushing up right now. All of our oscillators say she is. We got to push up on our PPO, MACD, green bars, and our RSI is up there at 65 now, and our 200 is just about flat. Looking at our five-day, five-minute, downhill run to this low bubble you can also see our 200 it has changed that is beautiful she went flat today and after market hours she is turning up and everything is turning up off of this low bubble she has been climbing steadily and after market hours she is still pushing up and all of our oscillators are looking strong every single one is pushing up right now this is looking really good folks this is going to be a quick one it's definitely a day trade 11 a.m tomorrow they're supposed to have their virtual meeting and this should get them out of hot water that's what they say it can't hurt to put it on your watch list it could be a bonus p-o-l i should have known better i did have three stocks i wanted to share with you Third one was ticker OMGA, but I don't have the time. I actually have an appointment tonight at 8 o'clock that I cannot miss. So you've got two hot penny stocks there. I've given you enough information to make you curious. Now go do some more due diligence and feel secure. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow.